And the view is from the scenic San Fernando Hill, a place where the reigning 1991 national Calypso monarch played in his early days, and a place which means a lot to him. We speak to Black Stalin today, Leroy Kalist. And Leroy, tell us something about this location. <laughs> well, Alvin, I must say that San Fernando Hill brings back real pleasant memory to me. Um, I born something like about, what, a hundred yards or more from here, a little street called Chisholm Street. I went to school. Uh, San Fernando Boys RC is less than half a mile from the hill. I sort of spent all my early days, like early Calypso days, when I would need to run away and sort of by myself and sort of meditate. It would either be down at the sea, flat rock, or either right on the hill here. And I think, you know, being here today um, brings back some much beautiful memories to me. We are talking about a person whose career has spanned from 1959 to now 32 years of Calypso. That's a long time. Mm, uh, huh, a pretty long time. A pretty long time. But I must say that is um, 32 years that I've really enjoyed. I think, you know, if I had a choice maybe to do it over again, I'll just do it over, do it over again. It was 32 beautiful years. Well, let's start at the very beginning. What happened in 1959? Well, <laughs> I must say from 1958 it started happening. Um, I, I grew up in a home where the, the, the art form was always around. I had a brother that really was a beautiful panist here in San Fernando, Joe. And I sort of grew up with music home. And um, from early age, I was sort of into it. Um, 1958, I decided then, you know, like um, after singing and maybe doing a little block singing, I decided professionally I would do it. I met this guy by the name of Successor, who was one of the men responsible for sort of bringing Brian on the scene too. And he started to work with me like from the middle of 58, you know, would take me around and see would help me with lines and so on. And Pam 59, um, in a little hall called Good Shepherd Hall in St. Madeline, um, you know, I saw that step on stage for the first time, and it was really a beautiful night. And that was just the beginning of it all. Well, I read somewhere that the first Calypso you sang in that year was how or why I want to be a Calypsonian. Can you remember any um, part of that Calypso? Oh, uh, that goes so far back that um, I had to say, like, Kitchener Boy. <laughs> that one hard to remember, but <laughs> that one really hard. That's what the mm -hmm. of it. Mm -hmm. 32 years, mm, that was a long time. Now, three years later, in 1962, one of your first, let's say, high moments, where you captured the, the Southern Calypso crown. Um, can you remember any aspect of, of that um, particular competition or the event itself? Yeah, well, I remember, I remember that very good because I was still singing around the Southland. And um, the king at that time was Duke. Um, in that competition, we had people like Maestro, we had people like Composer making his debut in San Fernando, and um, a couple other singers. And um, it was a beautiful night at Empire Cinema, where like um, I sang two songs. Um, I think the song was what I should say. Uh, Let's unite. Let's unite, and a tribute to Larry Constantine. Mm -hmm. And it was a, a runaway. But what made it so beautiful that night is like um, winning the crown. Um, that night, and that night even I was on at the national semi-finals. So it was just like winning the crown in San Fernando and just hustling to the Savannah to take part in, in, in the national semi-final. And I remember I and Duke sort of trying to make it up High Street by the library to catch a car in time to go to town, you know. Um, he was singing a day of all day to remember. And I was doing these two songs. And I think, you know, like, um, well, ever since our friendship since that time has always been real tight. And it was beautiful. I think it was a beautiful year. I always try to, to touch on my first recollection of the particular Calypsonian I'm dealing with. And somehow, whenever I think of the early days of you, I remember you singing over the board that they used to have in front of the band, and seeing you leaning over that board and singing, I just remember the line, Stalin Medallin. And I don't know what Calypso that particularly came from. It might have been one of the two tunes. Oh, well, I think that time, that time that was at OIB. Um, that is the time when the twist was happening, and I made a song where this girl was asking me to teach her to dance the twist. Stalin, darling, what you doing? You woman rolling, stuff the clip. Well, I mean, <laughs> <laughs> you don't know what to ask you that. But it was, it was, it was really a beautiful. It was some beautiful years. Yeah, it you know? went over very, very yeah, well. But, but what was nice too is that while '64 and '65 singing at OIB, um, I had the opportunity that year to maybe um, talk with Sparrow. 
you know, and get to understand a little closer how Calypso was going and certain insight things about Calypso. Mm -hmm. Because at that point, he was really doing it outside there. And I was able at that early age to get close to him, have some serious rap with him. And I think like, you know, 64 and 65 being in Sparrow Tent is, you know, it's sort of, that was my first stage, I must say, into the big times. Well, I see the, the start of it all with a tune called a tribute to Martin Luther King. Yeah. Tell us about that. <laughs> well, um, when I made the switch, like 1967, I came back up in Port of Spain at the review, mm -hmm. and I did beat my tune, and another song by the name of Culture Force, Force, Culture, Culture Force. Force. And um, I sort of made it to the finals, you know. Yes, you placed actually fourth in fourth the finals. Fourth in the finals, yeah, that year. Um, that was a beautiful, another beautiful year again, because it was my first final. And I had the opportunity of singing in that final between people like Cypher, people like Terra was defending the scrum, it had melody. And um, I learned a whole lot yeah. inside of that space. And um, those years I started to build like one positive song and still shake it up with a little, right. you know, a little um, you know, spicy one. And I did that like 68, um, 67. But, yeah. you know, it 67 up. was the first time that you reached the finals. Finals, yeah. yeah. 68, I sort of won the downtown competition, and I didn't even make it to the semi-final. So I sort of stayed home and I really do some serious homework mm -hmm. in 68, and I turned up with Martin Luther King. A man that told the world, considered as wise. A man that was awarded a Nobel Peace Prize. Violence was never his way to fight, but made several prisoners for civil rights. I remember one day in Mississippi when a reporter put a question to him Why must American Negroes get civil rights? And this was his answer to my delight We tell their cotton fields and give their pockets more wealth Mind their babies and have them in the best of health Took part in the Olympics don't care if we die, just to keep the star and strike flying high. Uphold democracy in and out of this land. From Germany to the foxhole of Vietnam. All this we did for America, so faithful and true. Tell me why we can eat in the same place like you. Now that's... Ten years after you started singing Calypso, you yeah. almost did it. You played second that year. Second that year. I mean, and, and it was really, I mean, it was like a miracle. I always tell myself, like, you know, how it happened, I just didn't know. But what I know is that I'm always doing homework, and we keep running workshops, and mm -hmm. unknown one, and we was always tight, you know. And um, I turned up with Martin Luther King, and I saw why I never missed Torres reply. And I was singing in, in, in the review. Well, I must say, at that point, after meeting Kitchener, like in 1967, I was able to really understand it all. Because um, never one day was I in Kitchener tent, sort of harness. I was able to relate to Lord Kitchener in terms of Calypso, um, if the meters and right, if the words and rhyme, because I spent something like 10 years very close with him, and that was the starting of that relationship. And it's between there that I sort of learned the fine art about the pen about Penny and Calypso. So 1969, when I got into this final, I was now ripe then, you know, mm -hmm. just under kitchen and ready to go. And my dad was a beautiful year. It was really a beautiful year. Well, the next big event, as far as I see, the song that you sang that up to today is like if the words still mean everything that's going on today. Repaint the portrait of Trinidad mm -hmm. of 1972. Mm -hmm. 1972. Well, wow, what I should say about <laughs> Now people clap their hands, people felt so glad when Sniper made portrait of Trinidad. But look around today, your eyes may get sore. What Sniper said, we have it down here no more. When a man say we not what we used to be, don't care how much it hurts. But one must agree, from 1965 to now, we are no more great. Our country has passed into rain. No more are our students ranked among the best. No more are our scholars passing every 
every chance. But dropping out from school every day in this island. No money to continue their education. Our Pitch Lake is the greatest the world has seen. Yet roads care are the worst in the Caribbean. So don't bow down your head. Brother, don't feel bad. I'm only painting on the portrait of Trinidad. And this new portrait, that final, I must say, was really a beautiful final for me. Mm -hmm. Because um, I had the opportunity for the first time of stepping on the stage in the Savannah with Sparrow, Kitchener, Chalkers, I mean, Relator, Duke on his fifth <laughs> crop. Right after four years. Yes, yes. and Pretender. And, and I mean, that was, a, that was, I think it's one of the best ever finals that I've sung in. I think I came something like fourth in that competition. You came fourth that, came year, fourth yeah. that year, too. And, um, Mm, it was just something as Sparrow singing Drunk and Disorderly and Rope, Kitchener singing Mrs. Harriman and the letter, Chokda singing Afrid Carl and, 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 and Culture, uh, Francine, Mr. Carnaval, Relita, Gavaska. <laughs> uh, man, it was really something happening. Yes, the BDA was, was a victory. I, I tell you, it was, it was. I think it's the best ever final that I've sung. Now, the following year, you did a tune which again has become one of your trademarks and your rendition of it in the Nafita Awards this year, Love Your Own. I mean, I have never heard you sing it better. Yeah, well, <laughs> well I think, you know, um, that rendition, this rendition of uh, Love, Love Your Own that I did at the Nafita Award, I think, you know, um, it's one of the things, you know, the setting of any show would say how, how good it would be for the night. And I think I must... Um, Again, compliment the people in the theater was uh, for setting such a beautiful stage at night. And I think everything was just in the mood right there for Love Your Own. It was a beautiful rendition. Yes, I'm begging. Yes, I'm pleading. You should love your own. You're not listening to what I'm saying. But someday you will get burned with your culture. You have no time. What I say, you pay me no mind. But one day you're going to be sorry that you didn't listen to me. One of these days, you're going to wake up and hear what you're going to find. Canada is the land of the limbo. England is the land of Calypso. Sweden is the land of the steel band, and then is nothing but Trinbegonian. Then you go put your hand on your head, and you go follow. If I didn't know, if I didn't know, I would have hold on to me. So 1976, when I was called for the semi-final, after not making it like 73, 74, and 75, I just tell myself, well, you know, I have a nice season. I know I could go to the Savannah and do some beautiful things. But I think 90, I should sit out this one and go to the Savannah Carnival Sunday night, sit down in the audience, see what the show looked like. And um, this is what I did. I, so, 1978, I sat down home. And um, I sort of really prepared for Calypso Crown. I tell myself, well, um, you know, William Mano came up with this deal that we could do an album together, and I must, you know, always say thanks to him for sort of giving me that first break to do that album outside here, where I was able to sort of express myself. I mean, and that opportunity was never really given to me with the recording room, you know, and right. I got this opportunity for me. And I sat down and I do the Caribbean Man album. 20 years it took you to win a Calypso Kong. That is paying your dues. Yeah. In 1979, with Caribbean Unity and uh, Play One. Play One. They try with a federation, the whole thing end in confusion. Caricom and then Carifta, but somehow a smelly disaster. Mr. West Indian politician, I mean, you went to a big institution. And how come you can unite seven million? When a West Indian Unity, I know this very easy. 
If you go only rap to your people and tell them like we, them is one race. The Caribbean man. From the same place. The Caribbean man. can make the same trip. The Caribbean man. On the same ship. The Caribbean man. So we must push one common intention for a better life in the region. For we women and we children. That must be the ambition of the Caribbean man. The Caribbean man. The Caribbean man. In fact, you got a lot of flack. And people saying, well, you know, what this thing this man talking about, black man coming together, and where the other races in the Caribbean and all of that? True. Well, I mean, like, um, well, you know, unknown always tell me then that, you know, once you don't go with the others, you're going to get some blues. And once you're getting some blues, means you're saying something. So, you know, with all that sort of blow up on the people's races and this and that, I sort of get a clear vision of maybe, again, why the Caribbean thing can't work out. You know, it's a lot of a lot of short-sighted people and people who just live for today. And you know, and I mean like still up to now we have fulfilled Caribbean man yet. I think like um, what 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 it was with Play One was this. Um during that time I heard a, a lot of a lot of Calypso me with Steel Band, with Pan, I saw that company with Calypso me. Um, as far back as maybe spoiler, I remember some of his early recordings with, with Steel Band. But um, I never did hear a duet between a Calypsonian and a Panis. And I wanted to really get the pan out instead of it being used just as a accompanying instrument for me. I wanted it to be used as a solo instrument. So, hence this, this, this whole idea about having the pan share the stage with the man. Time on what we always could look forward to one or two good tunes from Stalin. And there were some outstanding single tunes I want to talk about. Vampire Year. Uh, <laughs> well, again, we was, uh, we was approaching the, I think it was the 81 election. And again, like we keep seeing election after election, party after party. And when I look around, you know, John John still stay. Waterhole still stay. Little Africa still stay. Back day in San Fernando still stay. With no changes. And I mean, Five years after five years, people keep coming and saying, come on, give me a taste, and you won't get a taste. And we gave them a taste, and we still ain't getting no taste. And I sum it up to be, this is just people that suck in your blood. Mm -hmm. They just people just come in and sort of, you know, and, and put in fancy talk down on you, and nothing happened. So I think the only way that I could tell the nation, beware, look out for them, is vampire coming. Vampire, like he's passing through ghetto. When they're looking for blood, oh Lord, they know where to go. With banners and placards evermore. Every minute of the day, knocking at your door. But they're making sure before they pass. They're taking all the chillum and grass. An hour or so before they come. Let's move on forward with whiskey and rum. Vampire pass, vampire food, vampire hard, vampire wet, vampire. They say how they care about people, see them with them out begging for the stuff. Now the following year you went into a, a new Calypso tent that not many people remember called the Aiwi Calypso Theatre and you did a tune. Um, black man don't get nothing easy, which I think is one of your your outstanding compositions. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I'm, I must tell you a little about my reason for going into Aiyuri that year, which I think a lot of people do. Um, I had worked something like um, two years, and we formed the the wizard Calypso Ten, 
which we started at Port Services, but the original base it was right where the spectacular is now. Um, that building there, again, we must say thanks to William Monroe for having that kind of vision to build merely what we call the only concert hall in like 20 years in Trinidad. We have a spectacular forum. And we sort of build the spectacular forum for our Calypso tent, which was the Kingdom of the Wizard. After things didn't work out with, the, with, with um, the Kingdom of the Wizard, the business was turned over to the spectacular people. So I left and I went and I do the year with Kitchener at Port Services, which was 1981. Um, after the season, there was a merger between Kaiser Review and Spectacular for the 1982 season. And I decided, well, look, I on the Spectacular side, and I wouldn't go into that deal. So I decided again with Valentino that we do something called the Irie Kaiso Ten. And um, that year, that particular song, um, you know, I think it's one of my better compositions. It's one of my more popular songs, Black Man Don't Get Nothing Easy. Because at that time, you know, we started to get a little, you know, the oil money started to clear up and, and dry up a little bit and the whole country wanted to work on happen when this thing done and some people were still feeling that oil money could be here all the time. Mm -hmm. And I was trying to like put over in that song, you know, that you got to, you, you know, you got to hold on to the little that you have because we don't get it so easy. In fact, your first line tells it all. You wake up one morning and oil money running. Oil money come running. Come you don't know. Come it come you don't know. You don't care how the thing go. But if you read about Uriah Butler, you will find out the pressure. How they get so much old hell to get a penny from TLL. You know, and um, we mark beautiful lights like a, um, you know, we are set, you got to take up your own cash money, money for your own refinery. Black man comes to be contaminated, for black man to get a little something. Make up your mind to be a magician, to make money out of Papayan. Again, we had like, um, you know, a little unrest and thing because we came through that kind of period there. And, um... You know, where we talk about, um, we got to go to conference in England to get independence in your own land. Yeah, people hold you, humiliate you, enslave you, and then they free you, you know. And um, it was one of my better songs of the 80s. People hold you, humiliate you, surround and sell you, and then they free you. Black man to keep on charming, for black man to get a little something. So when you hear you hold on to that something, with that evil eye you keep watching, because I don't tell you already. Black man to get nothing easy. Okay, we're going to get up a little bit more now to the modern era, and your second monarch title, 1985. Mm-hmm. Dorothy. And, um, <laughs> is the... Is that well, um, to be honest with you, um, you know that year I never had intentions of going to Savannah because 19, what it was, the year before that, I sang uh, Make Them All Right. And I sort of wasn't pleased with my whole performance and thing in the season. Like I started to get a kind of lull again, like if I wasn't, you know, get sort of mixed up in certain things. And I just decided that I wasn't going to go to Savannah. I spent some time in New York. And I remember while staying at a brother's home in New York, in Iron, um, you know, I used to be home whole day, and Bama came up with this topic, Dorothy. And I tell myself, I wouldn't even compete with this song this year. Right? Look, I going down, I going down and just sing this song in the tent. And I came down. Um, it was never recorded. No. You know, it was never recorded. It was just singing in the tent. And I remember from the first night I sang that song in Arima, I remember that Jota St. Duke was there. And um, the next night they came over to the tent and um, choked us to saying, well, boy, I consider myself a composer. He said, but you see, last night that song that you sing, Dorothy, he said, you proved to be you is really a composer, and I even started. 
man can get to. I went best that if I that that do divide the bread equally. Yes, I go in and finish the whole dark. I lift the world, Dorothy. I want to see. I see Jamel. It's not because I'm, I saw that I wrote that song like about a year or two before. I wrote that song just as the Grenada crisis sort of take place. At that point, I didn't want to sing it the immediate year after the Grenada crisis because the things was in the air and I didn't think people had a clear insight of what happened in Grenada. Yeah. And I wanted to give it some time so I would deal with it total. You know, and I sort of give it a year and a half and two years, and then I did it some schism. Mm -hmm. And um, it went over well, I think, as the second song, you know, to win the crown. Grenada, Grenada, the black man thank you. Grenadian teach me the biggest lesson. And who will learn from them, I am sorry. But listen to the lessons Grenadian teach me. They teach me. The capital, social, or communism is the same gun head all of them on. And from the time you team up with them, like Grenada, you're straight on the losing end. My friend, my friend, God, to so stay away from them is um, all them is a misconfusion. Have a nuclear weapon Just to hold on to your reason So much material to talk about The following year, defending your crown with more come But let's go on to 1987 When you won the crown for the third time Fantastic year for you I mean, this is the year of Mr. Pan, Make and Bundem Which I personally consider the best double That a Calypsonian came into a final with Any tune could have stood up on its own I have I appoint you as steel bank savior. Don't you know the whole future of the steel bank? Yes, it lies in your the pan maker hand. It is you who will fill the steel pan industry. So standardization is a must, you would agree. Look, the secret of making steel pan. Is you alone must know, and you must carry that with you anywhere you go. Now, get yeah, what you must know. How many grams of steel it gonna take to make a big pan? Or what is the degree of heat you need to burn a yellow pan? Or what is the size of the rubber? Two feet a high, double tenner. These are the facts that you must have on the lock and cover. So let them fire it, keep that drum. Let them rent the skill of the man, but drop up inside of your hand, go be the secret of making fun. Mr. Panmaker was uh, lyrics of class, one of the best tunes that have been written for the pan in terms of its lyrical content. Now, bun them as a lanyard tune, and you got your flack again. People say, you even sing the song, is the whole audience sing it for you. How do you respond to that? Well, well, really, I was very hoarse that night. But I think, like, um, I knew that the lyrics in the song, even though if I lose some points with lyrics in the song, but my performance is going to be out there. I knew from full front already that I was on. I didn't have much writing. I just had was to seal. Mm -hmm. So what I did with, um, what I did that night in the Savannah stage, more instead of singing about them, and if you, you, you look at the flick, I sort of more, I sort of conduct the audience, mm -hmm. you know? So that night was a whole different final performance for me. And I mean, any time you look over the film, you would see it. Instead of more singing, I was more sort of directing the audience, you know, to sing for me. Right? What? 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 Well, 
And I remember you coming out like a ball of fire in this red outfit, looking small at first and then opening up as you came on stage. Yeah, well, well, <laughs> well, I think it was, it, you know, it, 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 it was a show well planned. going on in the savannah. <laughs> I mean, I've sung so much time in the savannah, and um, never did I see it like this. Well, this year, 1991, you've won the crown for the fourth time. And I mean, one wonders, how could you have done better than the year with Bandem? But this year has been really an outstanding year for you. Let's talk about 1991 and your material for this year. Yeah, well, what I say, sir, 1991, 1991, I started to write that album, Look at the Bright Side in New York. I sort of finished writing it in Trinidad. And um, I really wanted to soften up a little on this album because, like, um, we're going through, you know, when you you look at it, all music going through a sort of change now. I mean, like, um, although people understand, people love the construction and some of the arrangement, but I think now, with the speed of what things happening, you know, people have less time to concentrate about the meat and the music itself. So I wanted to sort of soften things up for 1991. Um, we went into the studio. I had Bright Side as my number one song. While we appreciate the little life got to give, regardless what the hood, we must think positive. Look on the brighter side. Look on the brighter side. Because. I see a silver lining behind this gray cloud we're passing. Look on the bright side. Look on the bright side. For the bright side is where we go in. And then, just like the album came out and Black Man want to party, just take off. <laughs> and I mean, like, don't care how we try to hold that song down and say, well, all right, we will try move or try revolution time, it wasn't working at all. Mm -hmm. And I mean, up to now, black man feeling the party just on. Stop all house work you're doing. Tonight we're going and have some fun. I just feel it to party. The way we used to when we was young. Just put on something sexy. So you'll be free to move around. Make sure the children okay. We are coming home until morning comes. Why, 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 why? 
How would you like your fans to perceive you, both in terms of the way you perform on stage and let's say the man, Black Stalin, who they do not see off stage? Well, again, like, um, it's the same man. What? Time, but we must keep fighting. Remember, they say that nothing lasts forever. One day is for the slave, one day for the master. So always keep your courage up. Don't allow confidence to drop. One day we'll be right there on top. While we appreciate the little life got to give, regardless what's the hood, Trini must think positive. Look on the brighter side. Look on the brighter side Because I see a silver lining Behind this grey cloud we're passing So look on the bright side Look on the bright side For the bright side is where Trinity 